gun, 15 since there's 15 players currently available in the editor. I don't know how many of them will be available to be played, but... And here we're going to use the variable. This is why we need to set the dialog into a variable, because now we can refer to this dialog from other functions later on, since we have a reference to it. We're going to show it. Actually, we can do... We can do our own show hide dialog. And we can... What does, do they call it here? Visible. And then you just look at this one, double click. And you see up here at the top, you said, see the preset, show hide option. All right, so we go in here, scroll up, preset. Click S, show hide option. This way, we can just put our variable, our parameter, sorry, directly in here. Then the dialog, and the player ID, we have to convert player to player group, since it takes a player group in, and we just take a parameter, player ID. That way, we can call this function to show or hide the dialog for any player. So we just go here, and we go show hide dialog for player one, and here you get this now you have hide or show, so we're going to show it. All right, uh, let's go test this. All right, so here we are in game. And yeah, we have our dialog with our six buttons. Uh, you can click, they just say ABC for now, and you can see the dialog is a bit wide and a bit high. But since we made put this all into variables, it's very easy for us to tweak it to change so that it's hugs the buttons a bit better, maybe make the buttons wider or something, and make the dialog a bit smaller. However, you should be careful. You will see I have the Terran border now, and if you have random race, you will get a different border for the dialog based on your race, unless you specifically set your dialog to have a special race border. So you couldn't do that. Uh, I like the Protoss border since actually the Terran and the Zerg borders are slightly wider in the edges than the Protoss border. But that's just a personal preference. So yeah, let's just go into the back into the editor and make these buttons actually do something. And maybe just tweak it down to make them a bit wider so they fill up the dialog and make the dialog a bit smaller. Alright. Alright. I just realized how horrible I am at time estimates, as we are currently already into the third video. Um, but, oh well, it's going to be longer than I initially anticipated. Let's just resume here. So, we saw that our dialogue was a bit too high, so all we need to do is just modify this height properly down a bit, say 70. This is something you will just have to try and fail over and over. The width was a bit too much, but we can instead increase the button width. So if we set that up to say 250, should be alright. Maybe a bit more, but uh, who cares. Alright, so we have our dialogue, and now we should uh, probably set the button names. And there are many ways you can do this. I usually just hard code it somewhere. Um, you could make an array with button names and stuff like that. But... Uh, mm, thinking, thinking. Alright, let's just do it properly. So... Uh, units or characters, character names is gonna be. I don't like it. You could use text if you want, and you can have color on it, but uh, you cannot convert text to string, so I'm just gonna use string. It's gonna be an array of six. Then we're gonna have the character. <sighs> Usually we would have a unit here, and then you make a unit type, probably, so that you could reference uh, reference your units. 
uh, after you pick them. But I'm not going to do this. This is just going to be the dialogue part. Uh, so I'm not going to bother with the actual units. I'm just going to have the picking part and you can handle the units yourself. You will know which dialogue button has been pressed and you will know which string it has and so on. You can just make an array for unit type as well. So character names uh, is all I'm going to add for now. What you could also do if you want to be able to just add... Actually, let's do that. I'm going to up these to 10. Alright. And then I'm going to do... Total characters here, an integer. Started at 0. And then I'm going to make an add character. And then we're just going to create one button per character that's added. Instead of having a static 6 button. So we're going to do a function. I should really learn the shortcut for this. So function is control alt r. Hmm. No, action I mean. Add unit to dialog. So for now it's just going to be a string unit name. Which is going to be a string. But you could add more here. Text, unit type, any other setting. Just store it in arrays and then pick it out later. Adds a unit to the dialog. Simple enough. Actions. Um, set variable. Character names. Index. Yeah, we're going to have to fix this, but parameter unit name. We're going to have to do uh, for each integer temp int. One to max characters, which is going to be ten, since the arrays are ten. So if you want to have the possibility for more characters, you'll have to modify this. You probably need to modify the dialogue as well, since the dialogue will get too high. If you have too many characters, you might want to make them appear side by side and so on. And that's up to you. Temp int. One, two, max characters. If then else. Condition, we have to check that this variable is empty in the character names. If the string equals nothing, if it's empty, then that's an empty character. So we set that one to the temp int and we modify variable. The total characters, we plus one, so we know how many characters we added, and then we just skip remaining actions. I'm not going to forget it this time. Skip remaining actions. All right. So then this function here will add another character. We go in here, and we go add unit to dialog, say marine, tor. And sort. So we add three of them. So this will add three unit names. We go back into the button uh, button unit. We have to redesign this one a bit. This total number of buttons uh, we don't need anymore. Instead, we're going to go here and we're going to set it to the total characters. And we're going to delete this. So then we'll make one button per character. And then we're just going to set the uh, button text to our, since our, this one takes in a text variable, we have a string, so we have to go convert string to text, not chat string, but our variable, character names, and the index is going to be the temp button number. All right, so then it's going to... For each character we add, it's going to add one more button, and it's going to set the text to whatever text we set it to. So that's fine. This should work just fine now. I'm not going to test it again, because well, it's going to take a while for 